calculate the towing force F. So we want to calculate the magnitude of that force F. Not as a vector entity, just the magnitude, because the direction is given by this 20 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Okay, it's needed to move the 2,000 kilogram car. And when you are given the mass of a car, you know you multiply by G to get the weight. And you look for something like this, which is the symbol for the center of gravity, where, where it would be applied. So that's where the weight would be applied for the car. Both the front and rear brakes are locked, meaning that the tire A and the tires at B um, don't rotate. So if you want to move this car, they're going to skid along the pavement. You're going to have to drag both of those tires. Now this is, we're approaching as a 2D problem. I know there's two tires at A and two tires at B, but this just 2D is simplified. The coefficient of static friction is 0.3. Here's the answer. How do we get that answer? Well, we're going to solve this problem. Should I give you a few minutes to get the free body diagram for this problem? That's usually the starting point, right? So let me give you a few minutes. All right, so you want to get a, a free body diagram that's close to being accurate. So I would do something like this. I know this is, there's my rendition of a car. Okay, and then I like to change color and put the weight right there to center gravity. I like to put the pull on the bumper, the force pulling up with the direction angle. I have a normal force, it's the pavement interacting. Even if you weren't pulling on it, I would have N sub A and N sub B. But because you're pulling on it and you're trying to make it skid and it's at the point of skidding, then we know the friction force is F of B and the friction force F of A. Look good? Now, maybe I should change color and come in here and put this as 20 degrees. Maybe I should put this as dimension right here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I'm going to pick off my dimensions and angles as I need it. Okay? But a real free body diagram would have all that detail, all the geometry, lengths, as well as uh, angles. All right. So now we go to the equations of equilibrium. And we do the sum of the forces and the x equal to zero. I think a lot of you were able to get that successfully. So what do we have? We have uh, F times the cosine of that 20 degree angle. And that's pulling in the negative x direction and the positive x. We have the friction at A and the friction at B. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the mu sub s, the coefficient of static friction, times the normal at A plus the normal at B. Look good? Maybe you took two steps to get there. Put the F and then replace the F by mu times N. And then the sum of the forces in the Y equal to zero. And what, we, what do we have? We have the, the um, F times the sine of 20 that lifts the car at the bumper. And we have the normal underneath the tire A plus the normal underneath the tire B is equal to the weight down. Okay. And then another equilibrium equation is the sum of the moments. And you can pick any point, but if I pick a point that knocks out both F of A and F of B, it'll simplify it. So pick it underneath tire A or underneath tire B. So I will just pick the sum of the moments at uh, point A. And and so what, what do we have participating in that equation? We're going to have to decompose this F and the two components, F and the X, F and the Y. One will make it want to rotate counterclockwise, the other clockwise. So there, watch the sign on that decomposing of F, okay? Let me check a few of you on that. You got it? 
So in the interest of time, let me kind of pick it up here. I want to decompose this force at uh, um, F into what I'll call uh, F of X and uh, F of Y. And the F of Y is F times the sine of 20 degrees. F of X is equal to F times the cosine of 20 degrees. We don't want to make an error on that, so go slow, right? And then what do we have? About point A, everything that makes it want to rotate in the counterclockwise, counterclockwise, and then balanced by everything that makes it want to rotate in the clockwise. Or counterclockwise minus clockwise is equal to zero either way. Okay, so F of X makes it want to rotate in the counterclockwise, so we're going to have F cosine of the 20 degrees times its moment arm distance of 0.3 meters. And then we look at it in normal at B. Maybe I should go over here. This normal at B makes it want to rotate in the counterclockwise. And its moment arm distance is 2.5 meter. I, had, I just summed one and one and a half. And then we subtract the weight uh, with the moment arm distance of one meter and we subtract the F of Y which is F uh, running out of room let me write it down here minus F sine of 20 degrees times its moment arm distance of 0.8 meter that's equal to zero okay now somebody already pointed out that because both tires are locked, then you can take these two equations and treat n sub a plus n sub b as like a single entity. And you can solve two equations with two unknowns. The, the, the unknowns are f and n sub a plus n sub b. You don't really need to go to the moment equation. If the front tires are unlocked and don't skid only the skidding comes from the back tire you must use the moment equation does that make sense but uh, from the these two equations with treating this and this is an unknown you can solve and you can you can get F and F comes in at right up here that many kilogram force or multiply by 9.81 5.647 kilonewtons. Did you get that number? Michelle, did you get it? You got it too? Anybody else get it? Three? That's pretty good, okay?